Hello, our family, this is Jane's Videos, and today I'm going to be talking about one of Spirit Halloween's newest 2020 sneak peeks that they dropped today along with another one, and this one is Punctured Pete. Now, right off the bat, I've got to say, I love this guy. Um, and guess what? He fits my haunt theme. I think that deserves a round of applause. Now, um, I know what you're thinking. Jaden, you're doing a laboratory. How does this fit your haunt theme? It's just a plain zombie. Well, thank you for asking, for one, and two... Um, zombies can fit in a laboratory. Actually, in the backstory, it says that the zombies that infected this guy escaped from a government lab facility, so there's that. I think that zombies are perfect for laboratories. They're one of the monsters that actually fits laboratories the best, in my opinion. But, if it was just a laboratory, then I don't know if he would fit. But, well, of course, my haunt is a laboratory. But, if you've seen my haunt blueprint videos, you know that my haunt is uh, the laboratory and the surrounding areas because experiments are done outside the main building as well. They're done on the grounds. It's a whole experimental facility. And uh, zombies are one of the many experiments that are made in that laboratory. And so I needed some more zombie props because I sadly don't have very many zombies. And I definitely needed more for that section of the haunt where the zombies are being experimented on. And uh, lo and behold, we have a zombie. Um, it makes me really happy. I know last year, last year when I did my farm themed haunt, I wasn't worried about not getting any props that fit my theme because we usually get at least one farm prop a year. And... Lo and behold, we got uh, Jack Straw and Rusty, and then we had some at other stores too, like Towering Jacko Man at Home Depot. Uh, so I wasn't worried about that, and I I, I uh, had enough farm props anyways to do it. Whereas with Laboratory, though I do have a lot of Laboratory props, I don't have nearly as many as Farm, and um, I think the more the better sometimes. Oh, I, I, of course, I think there should be a limit on how many props you have in a haunt. I think it should be limited to one or two main props for, per scene. Um, so yeah, the, I think there should be a limit, but I definitely could use more, even though I have, I do have enough laboratory props as is already to do a lab haunt. I wouldn't have chose the theme if I didn't, but um, I feel like the more we get that fit my haunt, the better. So I And I was worried this year that we wouldn't get any lab props, because farm props, last year I wasn't worried because they're usually common that we get them. But lab props aren't very common, and though this guy isn't a lab prop, we already had a lab prop, which is sewer varmint, and we already have three, actually four props now that fit my theme. Sewer varmint, punctured Pete, the next one, which I'm going to talk about in my next video. I think her name is Miserable Mari. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but... Also, Nightcrawler is going to work in my haunt, so there you go. Props that will fit my haunt. Anyways, getting on to talking about this guy himself. For one, he's a priority for me because, like I said, he fits my haunt with the zombies being experimented on in the lab. Of course, as you guys know, ever since last year, I'm only doing one theme taunts. Uh, last year, the entire haunt was a farm theme, and years prior, I did multiple themes. But ever since last year, the entire haunt was a farm theme, and I think it really helped the haunt a lot and made it so much better. And so I'm doing that from now on. So the entire haunt is going to be a laboratory. But like I already explained, this guy still fits because zombies are one of the experiments. I really like this guy. I think uh, he's a plain zombie. He's just a basic zombie, which I feel like some people it might take away from him for them. I like that a lot better because, in my opinion, I like basic plain zombies more than special zombies. I mean, Smoldering Zombie, he's a unique zombie, and he's my favorite zombie prop of all time. But that's only because he really appeals to me. I really love his uh, colors and everything about him. But uh, usually, I typically like just plain zombies that are just zombies. Um, and the reason why is because if the zombie apocalypse really happened, the zombies wouldn't be unique. They wouldn't be like, oh, look at me. I'm flaming. He's, he's toxic. He's shooting bow and arrows at people. No, they're not going to be uh, unique. They're going to be um, uh, just p normal people that have been infected. So they're mostly just going to look like plain zombies, like this guy. So I love plain zombies. But this one's a plain zombie with a cool added touch to him. Uh, the punctured aspect is really fantastic. I really like it. This guy can fit in many themes. Like I said, I'm using him in my lab because he works in my specific scenario. But I feel like he can also work in a farm because he's punctured by a piece of wood. And his backstory says he was working at the sawmill. So uh, he can work in a farm. Um, 
he can work in a zombie apocalypse. He can work in multiple different themes, and I really like that about this guy. That That is another reason I like that he's a plain zombie, because his aesthetic could really fit any theme. Um, well, not any theme, but a lot of different themes, and I really like him. $169.99 for this guy, which I think is a very fair price, as he has a full life-size prop. He's not standing. He's on his knees. I actually prefer him being on his knees more, because it looks like he's struggling more, but I think he's very fairly priced. Um... Definitely one of my favorites of the year. I really like him. His animation is very realistic looking, which I really enjoy. Uh, the audio, I do like the audio. Um, so I don't really have any complaints with this guy, honestly, except for the fact that he could have used a little bit more blood. He's got some blood on him, which is good. But I don't know why the blood is up there. I think the blood should be around where the stake or whatever that is driven in his heart is. That would make a lot more sense than the blood being near his collar. But nonetheless, he's got blood, he's got great detail, his animation is really realistic looking, and it's really disturbing and unnerving, and he's constant motion, so he's going to be going non-stop, so I think he's going to look really cool in any haunt because of that. So let me know what you think of Punctured Pete in the comments below. I really like this guy, can't wait to use him in my haunt this year, I think he's going to look great. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, hope you all enjoyed, keep howling at the moon, my werewolves.